Coming off the back of an incredible first series in the North American Strikers Academy, one can only hope that our second game of the day will be able to keep up that momentum. Welcome back, of course, to the NASA. I'm still dividing, but I've got a new uh play. I got a new player on the desk joining me today, Lumos. Uh, first of all, welcome. Uh, I want to know your thoughts on that first game. It was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little bit of a crazy game, but honestly, I think we need to focus on these PP legends. They're one of the, I mean, most people thought they were going to get into NAS, uh, yeah, Nassau this season. Yeah. But they weren't able to, and now they're in the secondary league and hopefully going to tear it up. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge opportunity for uh, PP Legends, a team that I believe the only team in uh, NASA who ended up competing in the first season of NASL. Uh, Ended up, uh, unfortunately, coming in last in the round robin there uh, and ended up, like you said, failing to qualify. So this is uh, a really huge opportunity for them to, like, prove themselves back at that tier one level. Um, and going up against Destroyer Mega Noob to start off, it feels like it should be a pretty great opportunity for uh, PP Legends to get off on the right foot, considering uh, how Destroyer Mega Noob uh, ended up uh kind of losing out on the liftoff tournament um but uh do you have any other insights on this team and what we can expect from them yeah so De destroying mega noob is actually like a more recent set of players uh if i re i remember hearing now this might not be totally confirmed but they played i think the game was like maiden and spell it was the other thing that uh Kamadera tv was streaming in terms of competitive play and they came from that game. They came since uh, release started, and they're actually pretty good. Honestly, they're they're not horrible, and like they can honestly put up a competition with some of these teams in NASA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's a really great opportunity for this newer squad of players to get their names out there against a lot of the better known teams and players in uh, the Omega Strikers scene. One of those, of course, being PP Legends. I mean, it would be an incredible story if uh, Destroyer Mega Noob were able to come out and get the upset on this former NASL team. But you have to assume that uh, PP Legends are the favored team going into this one. You th am, I, am I right on that? I mean, PP Legends is the favorite team for probably the league, second only to maybe, like, Quest, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. The new uh, Quest with a new goalie is a little weird, as we saw. It is a little game. weird. I mean, we did just see them lose right before this one, so um, may, maybe things are a little more up in the air than we than we think. Which, uh, which is going to real. Which I mean, that's going to really uh, switch things up. Um, hopefully, we get to see. Oh, I mean, like you said, I mean, PP Legends as the one NASL team coming into this one are probably the favorites to win overall, but. They still have to come out here. They still have to get these wins. They can't take anything for granted because these other NASA teams are extremely hungry to get that win on them. I mean, there's a massive target on the back of PP Legends right now. Yeah, as we go into the first game of the BO3, this is Oni Village as our first map. Mm -hmm. PP Legends will be on the blue side. They're looking for the Atlas Band traded with the Kai Band on the opposite side. Maddie's first on to... Probably the Dubu here, yeah. It's just a pretty standard pick once Atlas and Guy are down. Like, there's not, mm -hmm. not many other picks you'd play. Yeah, I mean, there's not, yeah, not a ton to do uh, on both sides. Of course, it uh, looks like Amy getting chosen as the sort of midfielder this time around. Amy, of course, able to do a lot of good uh, on the offense and the defense. We've seen her be played as both the midfielder and the goalie. Though, uh, other than the Dubu, Destroyer and Meganoob are going to go a completely different direction. They're going to go Estelle in the midfield and uh, Drakkar going to be that forward. Um, it feels maybe a little less... Uh, I'm I'm not sure. What do you what do you think about this composition that Destroyer and Meganoob are coming out with? It's a very interesting composition. I, I'm glad that Drakkar is not playing the solo midfield role because Drakkar, yeah. despite being strong in the midfield, does lack a lot of pressure against something like an Amy. Mm -hmm. But as we see here, the power of a double midfielder cannot be understated, especially on Oni Village, where the passing plays in the midfield matter sometimes more than just stuffing. Because, you know, a Dubu can just roll out, stop the core, and Fiery can't do anything, just like it did there. And they're able to keep on clearing. And they get the second goal gate really quickly here. 
yeah, this double midfielder strategy that the Shore and Meganoop are coming out is paying dividends early on, but that turret is going to help punch in that second goal barrier, and uh, and Javaro is going to have a little bit of work to do here, because now, of course, Fiery, as the one, like, true forward on the team, on the field, sorry, is going to have a pretty solid opportunity. Uh, we saw these Juliet Dubu mind games a bit in the last matchup, and we'll see if we can do a little bit more of that as Fiery immediately up in Javaro face. But in the meantime, Zaylin Comet doing a really nice job passing it up, but just out of range of that Drakkar hit that probably would have been a goal right there. We head into overtime now with both goals open. Yeah, now here, Walk has a chance here. Corp flip forced out. Corp flip from both goalies, and there's still saves. Tiffin Fortress comes out. Matty trying to find a save. A little rough angle, but Comet isn't able to capitalize before the Tiffin Fortress defense. Fiery with a flame flurry, and the strike scores it. Yeah, really nicely done from Fiery. Is go. I mean, the double of Flame Fury onto the goalie and the core. There's almost nothing that can be done to stop that one. Uh, incredibly well done, just playing to the bread and butter of this Juliet kit. Um, I'm I'm curious. I don't I I don't I just realized I don't actually remember what the starting augments were. I saw a bunch of people get speed boosts right at the start of that one. Uh, so we'll see what the um. We'll see, hopefully, at the first draft what that ended up being. But uh, Zale is very low on Stagger to start to start off this one. This is still has to be very careful uh, not to get too close, but that is going to allow Fiery the chance to just slip right through. Uh, two quick goals for PP Legends to start off the series. Yeah, I mean, with this double midfielder comp, they really need to either have their Dubu win that 1v1 more often and more reliably, or they need to just actually keep the core forward, because right now, Fiery and Walk are keeping it forward and getting these goal gate advantages. Fiery gets the second goal gate again. Maddie's overpositioning is going to get punished for it, loses one goal gate. Zale wants to find the second. Not able to find the pass. Walk is in the midfield, just trying to intercept. Able to clear it forward to Fiery. Walk has core flip. He's looking for something. Corflip comes out, dash punch. Dash just tries to CC the goalie, but it wasn't enough. Now, Matty is almost staggered, grabs the orb to heal back up, and Walk and Fiery are looking for a passing play in the 1v2. Pass goes up, pass goes down, rollout comes out. Good save by Gerardo. Corflip is forced. Nice angle from Fiery forces the core flip. Now, Zale returns it with a goal bear on the opposite side and almost has a core flip of their own. Yeah, a really nice defense and a quick KO from Fiery. Now here's the power play from PP Legends, and they're going to instantly capitalize on it. That is a pretty fast 3-0 victory from PP Legends, showing themselves early in this series why they are the favorites. Yeah, I mean, that's what you expect out of the PP Legends. Just a quick 3-0, and this Awakening draft is insane. But there's too many insane Awakenings for Juliet. They can't take everything. They want it so much of what's here and they'll go for the stacks on stacks yeah i mean it's that's incredibly good for the juliet of course uh hat didn't end up i don't think getting ko'd in that first set so uh that a loss of ko'd hasn't hasn't uh been a problem quite yet uh we also do see uh we also do see the goalie on the other side, uh, Javaro, go for the orb dancers. So those orbs that spawn in the goal area are going to uh, provide Dubu with a much needed speed. Yeah, and here to sure, Megan, great play in the midfield, secures them two goal rates really early on. Maddie has to hold it, has to buy the dime to get this elusive last goal gate on Oni Village for his team. Tofu Fortress comes out, and Javaro is still saving. But Fiery finds the kill. Zale almost able to hit that in with the Crystal uh, Thorns. I mean, Rose Thorns, but not able to just yet. Yeah, not quite done just yet. Maddie, though, working with an open goal, has a little bit of work to do, especially pushed up as far as this Dubu is right now. Uh, the core flip forced out from Zale to try and clear, but Fiery doing a fantastic job keeping the pressure on. Ooh. Maddie, though, with the roll to stop the core, but it just gets away. So Destroyer Mega Noob with their first goal of the series up in the second set. Yeah, Maddie was playing super far forward, trying to just win the strike war against Zale, but the issue is that the Devu Fortress from Javaro just means that the strike war win doesn't matter. As we get into this next round, Fiery is looking dangerous here. Almost counters Javaro's core flip, but still able to clear. Fiery has core flip, has the upper line. Bates out the rollout, but not able to get it through just yet. Javaro, nice saving. Walk finally gets the goal gate, passes out to Fiery. Fiery has flip, pops it, looking for the angle, and he finds it. 
Incredible. That was really great pre uh, patience from Fiery. Just seeing what Javar was going to do ends up stopping right in front of that Juliet and was able to uh, find the perfect angle to get it past that Dubu, tie things up in set number two. Uh, turret used to try and uh, stop that second goal barrier, but that is what's more impressive actually is the KO coming in. Now a 3v2 situation. It's actually Maddie who's pushed up all the way here to try and get that second goal barrier down, but some nice defense from Javaro is going to buy enough time for Zale to get back on the field. Yeah, Maddie wanted to rotate up, let Fiery heal back up with the orbs, make sure he doesn't lose those stacks. They weren't able to get much, and Matty did use his core flip just to even run back, but now Fiery has a chance, gets the goal gate. They trade it back from the side of Destroyer Mega Noob, and they need to collapse with the second goal gate, and the Tobu Fortress is a little wide, and Zale gets the second goal gate. Now Fiery has a passing play, dribbles, wins the strike war, but Zale intercepts. Now, trying to hit it forward, trying to hit it forward to the Jakar. Jakar with the lock and load hits it in. Nicely done from these uh, midfield players. I mean, this mid this, uh this double midfielder strategy has been a little bit tough on the Destroyer Mega Noob to start off. The fact that they don't have a serious striker has been a, kind of missed. Um, but if you're able to find those follow-ups from those lock and loads, you're uh, going to be able to play that Drakkar quite well in this situation. So let's see if they can keep it up here. The Destroyer Mega Noob now one goal away from taking the second set off of PP Legends. Fiery trying to make sure that doesn't happen, but is really having trouble getting past this Dubu defense. The turret, though, is going to help take down that second goal barrier, and Javaro just didn't quite know where to go. Thought that Wook was going to go for the pass up to Fiery, but just go straight for the goal instead. Yeah, Wook just hits the mini hits on from the glitch pop onto Javaro. Javaro can't really do much after that. It is 2-2 two to two in the second set, and Walk has a really big advantage getting the first goal gate, and Zale's now staggered. Fiery tries to go for the kill, but they're not able to find it. They use a lot of abilities against Zale, and Zale's still alive. Core flips to defend against Fiery, but he is still staggered. They need to find the kill soon, or it, all these abilities will be for naught, as Comet wants to find a goal gate. Now, Walk finally gets the kill. Finally... Staggered, I mean, kills the staggered Estelle. Com uh, the Drakkar is low as well. Fiery trying to look for the strike war against Javaro. Mm -hmm. Not able to find it just yet. It's a 3v1, and Javaro's holding. The oh. piercing shot hits it and hits Maddie's second goal gate. Yeah, I mean, Maddie has been playing very forward this round, trying to go for some aggressive play, but it ends up kind of uh, biting. PP Legends there as you lose your second goal barrier first, even with all that aggressive play, even with the power play available a little bit earlier. Uh, a little bit of an unfortunate angle that maybe could have gone in, but it's not going to happen quite yet. Core flip comes out from Maddie, but it ends up going right back into that Dubu's face. Almost ends up failing. Uh, Javaro uses the core flip now. And the, gets actually past the Tofu Fortress, but not past Maddie. A lot of low stagger bars, but it is going to be Destroyer Mega Noob, who end up winning this set. Uh, it's not saying, hey, PP Legends might be the favorites, but we are here. We are here to stay. Yeah, very close hit from Destroyer Magnum, and they're able to grab this advantage in the Awakening draft. But here, I mean, Dubu will probably take Ponder to get the double orb synergy. Uh, Deadeye on the Amy is actually a little dangerous. Wolk might be able to grab a lot more kill confirm. Juliet still gets Big Fish. The, the Dubu first pick, he thought for a while, and he finally takes the Ponderer. Mm. But Juliet got... Yeah, Juliet got Big Fish there. I'm surprised they let yeah. Big Fish fall to Juliet. And, I mean, the Dracar does get Rapid Fire, which is a really important awakening on Dracar. But I'm still yeah. surprised you passed down the size training all the way down to the Fiery. I mean, maybe you're just trying to go for a bit of an orb build right now. Um, trying to just get as many uh, benefits off of those orbs that spawn right next to you that you basically have first dibs on as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, you're right. That's that size, especially with how far away the two goal barriers are for each other, would have been huge for that Dubu player as uh, Javaro immediately down very, uh, very low down both goal barriers. And but the other side. You've lost a player. So with the core flip trying to knock it through, and it is going to happen just like that. That was a nasty angle from Comet. Is going to knock it in. Destroyer Mega Noob again off to a fast start in set number three. Yeah, Comet able to slice that in after they punish Wolk for overextending. They stagger him and they just kill him. 
Now they need you to have some form of comeback here, and getting the first goal gate early is a good sign. Comet with the core flip, tries to hit it to the angle. Zale gets a goal gate off a of strike or fiery, trying to look for the dash punch, trying to get it through, but Jaro now has core flip. That's a pretty hard to score on Dubu now, as he mm. just tries to get it forward to his midfielders, but fiery almost hits it through, forces out the core flip. Zale and Comet trying to coordinate, trying to get it through Maddie. Just not able to yet. The Firewall Sentry comes out, buys a lot of time. Now Fiery has a chance. Tip of Fortress denies. Zale with the core flip almost has a chance, but Maddie has the strike war. Now double core flip on the side of PP Legends. Fiery gets the kill with the dash punch. Core flip isn't oh. enough to save. Comet, great lock and load. Javaro is still defending. Comet has to punish here, or they can even just wait for his Estelle to be back up in two seconds. Can't win the strike wars. Fiery looking for something. Tip of Fortress to defend. Well, Fiery both have core flip, but Comet and Zale have an opportunity to score here on the open gate. Yeah, this is a massive opportunity for Fiery. Gets the goal barrier down, but is a very fast core that is just swapping back and forth as we had an overtime. Javaro almost ends up putting that on the wrong angle, but manages to clear it uh, as we head back and forth. Both teams struggling for position here. The turret goes out to not much avail here. Uh, Zale is forced to go elusive as Fiery is just going for the kill on the Estelle, but ends up getting distracted too much. A very fast core there, thanks to the help of Comet 4K. Doesn't even have to use the core flip and has one more goal before they take the lead in this match. Yeah, Destroy Mega Noob are looking to take this advantage in this match. And here, Comet does use the core flip. Doesn't actually get much value out of it, though. Zale almost has his, though. They're... They have the fire up on Zale, which is allowing them to have a little more energy in this midfield, but Zale gets staggered. Javaro loses his second goal barrier. Walk and Fiery are trying to coordinate, trying to get the second, this first goal for them in this set as Walk, nice glitch pop, finds the kill on Zale. Yeah, very well done. This is a massive opportunity now for PP Legends, and that is just the easiest kick of Fiery's life right there. PP Legends aren't going to go down in a sleep at, in a, sorry, a sweep at the very least. Um, uh, Destroyer Mega Noob, though, still with a fantastic opportunity here. The question is, can this young team convert? Yeah, we'll have to see. Maddie forced the course of comment. There's really good pressure. Gets a goal gate and forces a flip just by being there. Fiery not able to catch his own dribble, not able to control the course. Comment with the lock and loves gets the second goal gate and what could be the last goal of the set. And it is. Oh. He just wins the strike war. And Destroyer Mega Noob are up 2 1 in this game. I mean, sometimes you just win the 50-50 against the goalie, and those coin flips end up coming up huge for Destroyer Mega Noob. All of a sudden, PP Legends find themselves in a hole. Uh, makes you wonder what they're uh, meant, what they're thinking right now as the one former North American Strikers League team. Can they get themselves back out of this deficit here? Okay, I mean. <laughs> the two boosts have just been picking up all of the orb related uh orb yeah, related things so it's gotta be a the, build this is a really good draft by pp legends they get timeless they get they deny the orb replicator uh -huh. and they get a uh, tempo swing on the julia it is an insane swing in the awakening draft for the pp legends and we'll see if they ha get to use it i mean really all that happened was comet got fiery trapped that's and that's so it <laughs> Yeah. Fiery was trapped between two Tofu Fortresses. <laughs> Couldn't move for a minute there. Deeper Vault is a very uh, normal ability that works 100% of the time. As I am <laughs> saying that, Gamet is just almost dead. Fiery not able to secure the kill, though. Tofu Fortress comes out from the other side, almost just trying to force a lot of pressure, trying to uh, close the clear angles. Now Fiery looking for the passing play. Zale into intercept. Walk trying to kill Comet, Not able to hit the Cyber Swipe. Comet's still alive. Walk almost has core flip. Zill not able to find the piercing shot. Fiery dashes forward. Good deny from the Dubu. Tofu Fortress comes out. Now Corflet out of Zale gets the goal gate. Comet looking for it, but Walk intercepts. And with that, they're almost able to hit it in, but Fiery just can't connect. Corflet finds the kill on Zale. Trying to hit it through. Trying to get it to Fiery with the flip. Maddie has a flip of his own to defend. He walks forward. He gets Ooh. it forward. Double flip, but Javaro clears it with the log. Huge from Javaro, especially with a player down and a core flip from the opposing goalie going aggressive. That is a massive defensive play from the Shorter Mega Noob to try and keep the momentum in their favor here. We're back to a 3v3. The Drakkar tries to knock it in. Here's the core flip from Javaro now, and it gets Ooh. past the Dubu. Can't quite get there. 
that's PP Legends take advantage of the forward goalie play in order to take the first goal in set four. Bit of an awkward angle, and Matty's just able to slot that in. The Dubu actually scoring the core from his own net. Uh, here, double Dubu Fort just comes out, little fight pit, and doesn't really, nothing really happens there, but Firewall Sentry comes out. Denied with the core flip by Zale. Up to Comet. Comet has the core flip, gets one goalie. Core flip tries to get the second, and he does, but he loses one. Javaro not able to defend. He lo Javaro loses both, but Zale and Comet have the oh. positioning, and they're able to score it just barely. Matty not able to find the clearing angle. That is a tough one. I think Matty was just, just a millisecond too late with that hit, and just wasn't able, you're right, wasn't able to hit it up and get the clear, so... Very nicely done from Destroyer Mega Noob. They tie things up. And again, this is uh, this is match point for them right now. If they can win this set number four, <laughs> again, these these Dubu Tofu Fortresses have been making things very confusing at times for both of these teams. Uh, Zale got taken out early, comes back now, though, as uh, Wook has now found themselves in a bit of a goalie situation. Oh. Fiery gets the kill onto the Dubu. And that is that for PP Legends. I mean... Fiery just walking up already has the uh, Omega already up to level 10 was able to find Javar on the other side it just left the net wide open Yeah, really important kill fight fire there gets PP legend the advantage in this game They need to find something back and with the cyber I mean with this firewall sentry plus double logs It's just a chaos in terms of where the orb goes But here fiery another kill at the dash when fiery is solo-handedly just trying to win this game as the core flip plus Maddie's rollout uh -oh. gets the kill, but now all Goliaths are down. It's it's still a 3v1, so <laughs> Fiery's able to yeah. score it. But that was a little tense for a second there. Maddie's uh, overcommitment for the kill was a bit punished, but I mean, there's yeah. not much you can do in a 3v1, so... I mean, yeah. Fiery, just a quick punch to the face of uh, of the Drakkar there, making sure that you couldn't react fast enough to get to that goal. As once again, I mean, this is a, I mean, this is incredible. We already have another set five in game number two. Primetime, of course, comes out here on the Vaudible channel. That's always a fun time, and it immediately gets snatched up by um, uh, Maddie. Yeah, here you get Super Surge on your Amy, a little more damage. Quick Strikes under Jakari will help the core control in the midfield, but honestly, with the amount of kills Fiery's getting, it might not matter, especially with this extra power from the Prize Fighter that will keep on stacking up with his stacks and just kind of make him a killing demon. And that's the hope for PP Legends, but Zale gets both Gold Gates really early on. Tofu Fortress will defend for the time being. Good Tofu Fortress out of Matty are buying them the time despite these bo Goliaths both being down. But Zale, what an angle! Hits the demon angle with the core flip. And they want to close out this set and close out this game. I mean, that was just a disgusting angle from Zale. Just getting it right past Matty's Maddie's hit. Very, very well done. Uh, if, that, if that was purposeful, my goodness. That was just like incredible. I mean, A plus in geometry right there from Fiery. Sorry, not fiery from uh, from Zale. Uh, very well done. Yeah, here's Zale. Core Flips actually doesn't really get much. He is staggered. Javero just trying to apply that forward pressure with the Core Flip of his own. Zale still staggered. He's still living. And Comet is getting the Gold Gates. Destroyer Mega Noob are looking to close out this game. Zale will heal back up with the Orb. Fiery has Core Flip, though. He wants to grab some sort of advantage. Wook gets the Gold Gate. Core Flip comes out. He's trying to find his angle, but Comet's right there to just stop him in his tracks. Zale not able to. Catch the clear, and now PP Legends has a chance to score here. Pass the fiery with the flame flurry just hits it through. Not much Javaro could do there without any elusive. Yeah, very very well done from fire again. This the patience from this Juliet has also been really really good. Has had these opportunities one v one on the goal and has every time just been uh, very patient. Has waited to see what Javara would try to do and always had the winning play no matter oh, what and fiery with the dubu kill this has been free in the past it does force the core flip out of maddie to make it happen but to secure the goal i think that is more than worth it pp legends now one goal away from securing match number one yeah that's the power of the prize fighter plus stacks julie just able to find so many kills out of nowhere as BB Legends want to show their dominance in this game one, a little bit of a slow start, one might say, but they want to secure this game one. Mm -hmm. And Matty will be a big part of that with the defenses he's been doing this game. Yeah, been doing a great job so far. 
Uh, but uh, as we say that, ends up giving up both goal barriers here. Uh, Javaro ends up giving up the other one thanks to, uh, in a large part, the turret from Wook. Fiery is just going to let it go right on in. Had the core flip, doesn't need it. PP Legends takes game number one. Yeah, PP Legends will take that game number one a little closer than most people would expect, and I probably PP Legends hoped it would be. It's a little insane how well Destroyer and Meganu have played, because I, I know they're good players. I've played them in solo mm -hmm. queue. Like, they're pretty good players. They can, you know, handle a lot of teams, but you'd never expect them to take PP Legends to a game five, and they just did. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the double midfielder strategy that they had going was... Uh... A little bit confusing for PP Legends to deal with to start off with. It just felt like there was so much, uh, so much damage, so much disruption from the Drakkar and the Estelle running around. But uh, once we got later on into the game, and Fiery was able to pick up those really offensive-minded uh, awakenings, you were able to really, you're able to really. Um, you're able to really take advantage of the fact that you were the only forward on the field and just get KO after KO. Uh, as I say that, though, uh, shout out to Wook, who was a little bit under the radar, but got five KOs to Fiery seven and got way more damage as well. Uh, almost 40,000. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of the midfield, Amy. It's just that pure amount of damage, especially getting that super surge mm -hmm. game that time was creator. The amount of damage, and he can bump out even in the midfield just kind of secured them that ko advantage that Barry used with the prize fighter to kind of secure this game yeah incredibly well done from pp legends and i think it does show a lot about this pp legends team there are a lot of teams out there who hey they're coming into this game against destroyer mega noob they're the heavy favorites to win it destroyer mega noob though come out set one they come out with a lot more fight than except than uh, expected they take a couple of sets off of you and all of a sudden you're thinking oh my gosh we're going to lose to this team we're going to end up falling even further down the rankings but it really does say a lot about pp legends that they were able to recover and they were able to take the win anyways even though it was a little closer than they expected yeah, I mean, it, it really showed how close these teams are in this NASA league, which is always what you want to see. Game five, set fives, all fun to see. But that was only game one of this best of three series against mm -hmm. these two teams. And we'll have to see if Destroy Mega Noob can prove that they are still a contender against PP Legends in the second game. I mean, I think uh, Destroy or Mega Noob, regardless of even what happens in game two, even if they get, do get kind of swept very quickly here, I think they did prove that they do have the potential to stand up to the higher teams in uh, NASA, and they are a team to fear. We're heading over now to Atten City, uh, a much more open map overall. So uh, Kai and Estelle ends up getting banned from both sides. So uh, we're probably not going to see double midfield come out again unless you want to uh, put a, a third midfielder in there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, they they do really respect Zale's um, Estelle there. They throw the ban out on this map. And honestly, Zale did play really well in that game. It is a deserved ban. And especially on Athens City, you're not too worried about the Atlas as he's a little less than optimal on this map. Yeah, it is going to be a little bit tougher here, but we do see Rasmus has come out from both sides, and it's actually going to be, yeah, Rasmus has come out from both sides. Zale is going to try and counter Fiery on that one uh, now that the Estelle has been taken away. So, game number two, PP Legends with the opportunity to end this one in two games here. Uh, we'll see what happens here on the much more open fields of Otten City. Uh, a very large goal barrier for these dupies to try and protect. Yeah, and as it seems that it is a rapid fire as the starting awakening. Can't really see it that well, but... Now, PP Legends lost their goal game really early on, and Comet mm -hmm. just with, went to the strike war against Maddie, and uh, I believe the team swapped. Yeah, they, there is a team swap here, so uh, PP Legends are on the uh, red team this time around. Oh, uh, oh, hey, there it is. We got to flip back around. Okay, 
So, uh, yeah, really nice. And I think that's kind of what we're going to be seeing a lot. There's going to be a lot of emphasis on who ends up losing this goal barrier first. Again, it's a massive goal barrier. The first one that goes down uh, will often end up uh, putting a ton of pressure on the goalie as people like Fiery demonstrating what I'm saying as I'm saying it was able to keep up the offense, go to the bottom, then to the top, and there's just nothing Javaro could do. Yeah, Fiery, really nice use of the death touch, able to just do a little bit of a mix-up and make this set a little more even. Fiery has score flip, so does Walk. There's a very big energy advantage by the side of PP Legends, but Comet is just winning the strike was providing some much needed pressure, but Javaro just not able to hold that goal gate. One core flip comes out, does not hit anything, and now Walk needs to find an angle, needs to find it past Zale, but Zale just keeps this core control. But and again, Fiery with these death touches secures the cross up and secures the goal. Incredibly well done from Fiery with clearly a lot of control over this Rasmus Pendulum, uh, giving Javaro fits to start off this game number two. You're gonna have to see some kind of adjustment here from the defense of Destroyer Mega Noob as the uh, turret comes out to try and uh, secure that goal barrier. Doesn't quite happen to start off. Uh, we do see some core flips come out. It is actually gonna be Zale who gets the goal barrier down but ends up losing their life as a result. And Fire ends up getting it down right afterwards. Javara with a lot of work to do now with a power play opportunity. But an awkward angle here is probably going to buy enough time for Zale to get back. And that's exactly what happens. But it does not matter. Oh Maddie. my gosh, Matt, out of nowhere, it just walks up to the opposing goal and says, I'll do it myself. Goal, uh, core flip, first set, PP Legends. Yeah, Matt, he really wanting to show the amount of pressure he has on this Dubu. Doesn't even have the Orb Dancer yet, as it will be taken first here. Orb Dancer is a very important awakening on Athens City, especially even on Fords, more than goalies, honestly. And it is very big for PP Legends to get that in this first awakening, Jeff. The Replicator does go over to the Jakar, but unless they get a Ponder on the side of Jashari Mega Noob, that Replicator is a basically a dead awakening. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. I mean, getting both Orb Replicator and Orb Dancer online in the same draft is really tough if you want to try and get like an Orb-based build going, because obviously you can't pick up both of them. So Comma 4K is going to have to really hope that they get the Ponderer uh, in a, uh, another draft or two, or else, uh, yeah, you're right, that is a... T tough missed opportunity but uh on the bright side you're able to get the gold barrier down first so you have a quite a bit of uh you have quite a bit of an opportunity here but you end up actually losing a player so comet and javaro trying to push the aggression even though you are down to two to three you end up losing the goal barrier even with the roll coming up from javaro stopping things for the moment an awkward angle just barely safe from javaro does have the core flip available if you end up needing it and you need it just then sends it down and away yeah fiery now almost has his core so he's just trying to find the angle zale is staggered in the midfield you just see the amount of pressure this aim is doing in terms of damage zale is dying to this rasmus and fiery what an angle from that core flip finds it that is incredible from uh incredible angle from PP Legends. They really seem to have found their groove here with this Rasmus comp here on Atten City. But oh man, that starting hit just ends up going right through Maddie. So all of a sudden this dude working with an open goal and with the core flip on Comet, there was just nothing that could be done. So Destroyer Mega Noob tie things up one to one here. Uh, really nicely done from Comet uh, taking advantage of the early goal barrier breakage. Yeah, I mean, Maddie has been losing these goal barriers early on, but honestly, a lot of the times he's been saving, just not that time. As they get another kill, again, Amy and the damage pressure from them is making the difference, providing this, uh, this extra pressure in the midfield in the 2v3 as they will be able to get a goal gate as Comet respawns. Yeah, Pendulum Swing from Fiery, able to finish that one out. Looking for the goal here. A nice Pendulum Swing, but it is not going to be enough. Nice save from Javaro. Going to clear it out for the moment. Sends it over to Zale, who's now pressing on the attack with Comet. Going to find that goal barrier on the other side. But very low as a result. Staggered up. And a very crazy corner shot from Fiery is going to get it right past Javaro. PP Legends up 2-1. Yeah, Fire's just been just able to mix up Javar and find these angles. 
and so it's really been getting PP Legends their lead, as now they have two core flips, Tifu Fortress comes out, a little bit of a Tifu pit for a bit All right. there. <laughs> yeah, let's so, just take a break for a second, actually. I mean, the thing is, PP Legends can wait it out, because they're doing damage. Zale is staggered, and now is finally killed. Fiery has flipped, Matty has flipped, they're gonna just walk at him, flip to get the gold barrier, Javaro not able to save it. Now, Matty, oh, a little over-aggressive there, Javaro tries to punish, but Walkie's playing goalie, able to get it forward, able to get past Comet, actually. Now, Matty, walking forward with the core flip, doesn't even need it, just hits it in. Very nice, and again, what a nasty angle. I think that Javaro thought that maybe it was going to clip off of that side angle up to the top of the goal but it is perfectly placed to get right past the dubu pp legends after a bit of a tough set number one seem right back in form in set two yeah and now here quick strikes on the rasmus a little more core control in the midfield but Dracar will get this aerialis a little awkward because that can lead to a lot more stuffing attempts a lot more midfield core control if he uses his lock and lead there. Castle Ass will give him a little more speed in the midfield before the Rasmus. And perfect form. I think that's the most dangerous part of here because Walk is just using his abilities on CD, trying to stagger their destroyer Mega Noob. And with a little more CDs from that perfect form, it might just make those kills a little faster oh. as he gets a kill just with the Cyrus Life gl glitch pop combo. I mean, that's incredible awareness from Walk, seeing how close they were hanging out to the edge and knew that it was dangerous. And look at all of the low health bar. Zale is so low right now, trying to run for the orb on the opposite goal and is going to find it to heal up, luckily. But uh, just goes to show how much damage this PP Legends composition is doing so far. Both goal barriers down right now, so both teams still with an opportunity here to Ooh. start off on the right foot. But Fiery gets the KO onto Javaro, and that just leaves the easiest goal of their life. Fiery again with the Death Touch just crossing up Javaro, and Javaro just hasn't been able to respond to these Death Touch redirects. And Fiery gets a kill and a goal. Now, Court Flip out of walk. Ari right, has this as well. PP Legends trying to find this early goal gate. But Zale is just Ooh. found out he's just dead. The rollout finds him. And PP Legends are in another 2v3 as Fiery gets the goal gate. Oh, flips, gosh. gets a kill. Oh, my the gosh. Unlucky didn't score there, but they get the ace and they get the goal. That is incredible. That was maybe the best placed Amy turret that I've seen in a very long time. There was nothing that the Destroyer Mega Noob could do but wait as the core kept getting bounced back into their goal as they kept taking so much damage. Huge plays from Luke and all of a sudden here, Lumos, PP Legends are one goal away from taking the series. Yeah, one goal away from just doing a quick 3-0 against the Destroyer Mega Noob saying that last game was a fluke, but they'll still win the fluke as... Fire gets the goal gate, will get a lot of damage and some core control. Comet is broken though, and Zale gets the goal gate. This could be a chance for Mega Noob to come back. Fiery just trying to find the kill in Comet, but not able to hit the death touch. Look to Fiery. Comet intercepts. Molten Bolt comes out, just slows Fiery for the time being. Zale has core flip. Fire and Wook has the firewall sentry, but not able to secure the goal. Wook has core flip. Tofu Fortress not able to actually keep it forward. Wook is almost staggered. He is now staggered, but can they find the kill? No, Fiery finds oh. the kill with the Benjamin swing, finds the second kill with the death touch, and just strikes it in. That was an incredible play from Fiery with PP Legends on a bit of a uh, tough situation there uh, with no goal barrier, very close to being staggered. Fiery finds the kills that PP Legends needs to get a convincing win on game number two and start off their NASA season on the right foot. Lumos, after what was a very close set one, I think it really says a lot about this PPL team. They were able to come back with such force in game two. Yeah, PPL had skill. They took game two very dominantly. As you can see here, just look how little the stats are for destroying <laughs> Mega Noob. I'm, Holy. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm seeing what I think is probably the, the story of the game here. Eight KOs for Fiery, zero for Zale. Uh, even while doing, even though Zale did a little bit more damage, Fiery was able to use those death touches much more aggressively. And I mean, 
let's 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 be real here. I mean, we're all seeing it. We have zero KOs for the entire destroyer mega noob side. They were consistently getting crossed up. They were consistently uh uh, unfortunately, not quite able to land those high combo, uh, those high combo um, abilities, and uh, Wook did a lot of uh, work here as well. Uh, I think they had a really great system here. You can see all the damage that Wook did, almost doubling the second highest person in the lobby. It was definitely Wook gets all the damage, gets him staggered, and then Fiery finds the finisher. Uh, it was used to great effect. Yeah, and usually it's not the best uh, <laughs> form when the enemy goalie gets more goals than your entire team as Maddie pulls up three <laughs> out of the six fair. goals. That's a fair point. Oh my yeah. That's a fair one. Yeah, Maddie. Uh playing uh actually a Fairly aggressive Dubu was pushing up onto the other side pretty often. Uh, it ended up uh, going against them a couple of times in game number one, but uh, Batty really up showing up in game number two as well. Uh, PV Legends with a very convincing set to victory end up taking uh, their first match of the NASA season 2-0. Lumos, any final thoughts on this one before we send it to break? I mean, it's a good start for the PP Legends. They need it as this will be a long season. It's a lot of BO3s to play. But as, as you said, we will be going to a break. We will be watching the LP Thieves versus, uh, what was it, Platinum X? Yeah, Platinum, Platinum X. Exclusive uh, after this break.